I don't know where they're taking us, but pipe down, okay? Otherwise, I, I think Bjorn here is going to whack me with his at gear and send me straight to Asgard. It's a Viking thing. You wouldn't understand. By the way, what's with that hat? Real Vikings didn't wear horns on their helmets. That's a myth. Well, I'm sorry that you paid $50 for it. You got cheated. Dear Tim and Moby, I want to know about Vikings. From Sir Sean. Hmm, this must be from that Irish nobleman whose castle we just sacked. Well, Sir Sean, as you probably realize now, the Vikings were warriors and adventurers from Scandinavia. That's the part of Europe that includes the modern countries of Sweden, Denmark, and Norway. Right, because they were from Northern Europe, they were also known as Northmen, or Norsemen. The Vikings first gained attention around 800 CE, during the Middle Ages, or Medieval period. Out of nowhere, they began staging bloody, destructive raids on monasteries and villages in Northern Europe. The next 250 years is often called the Viking Age. People lived in total fear of their attacks, which occurred frequently. Sure, they were tough fighters, but they owed much of their success to superior strategy and technology. Viking longships were much faster and more maneuverable than other ships of the era. They could cross the open sea and navigate rivers and channels, too. The Vikings were first-rate sailors and navigators with expert knowledge of European coastlines. And they knew where to find valuable goods in areas that weren't well defended. Typically, Viking longships would move in quickly without warning, and the men on board would stage speedy hit-and-run attacks. By the time the locals mustered enough force to fight them off, it'd already be gone. After a while, the Vikings got more ambitious. Small raiding parties were replaced by invading armies, often with thousands of warriors. Let's see, during the 9th and 10th centuries, Vikings captured and settled a huge chunk of eastern England. They also forced the English to pay them thousands of pounds of silver to prevent them from wrecking the rest of the country. In France, they became such a headache that the king simply gave them the region of Normandy. In return, they promised to protect France against future Viking raids. Other Vikings wound up settling in Iceland, Russia, Ukraine, and Italy, and launching raids as far away as the Middle East. This helped them establish major trade routes that connected the Mediterranean and Northern Europe. They even tried to take over Constantinople in modern Turkey. The capital of the Byzantine Empire, it was one of the biggest and most important cities in the medieval world. They failed, but the Byzantine Emperor was so impressed that he paid them to join a new elite fighting force called the Varangian Guard. Meanwhile, Vikings led by Eric the Red and his son, Leif Erikson, established settlements in Greenland and Canada. You heard me. The Vikings reached North America 500 years before Columbus. They eventually abandoned their colony there, but some of the ruins still exist in Newfoundland. Why did the Vikings do all this? Oh, it's pretty simple. Money, fame, and glory. Most Vikings did not come from noble or wealthy backgrounds, so raiding and plundering were good ways for them to move up in the world. And according to their religion, the bravest warriors, especially those who died in battle, would feast with the gods in the afterlife. Many Norse people also wanted to establish new trade routes and settle new land that they could farm. Well, no, they, they weren't just uncivilized raiders. Among themselves, Vikings were extremely cultured. They placed great importance on the rule of law, which all people, even kings, had to obey. Accused criminals received public jury trials, and there were legislative assemblies called things, where the Norse elected leaders and discussed important issues. Every citizen, male and female, had the right to voice an opinion at these gatherings. Speaking of which, women had more rights in Viking society than elsewhere in medieval Europe. They could own property and even divorce their husbands. Yeah, the Viking Age came to an end in the 11th century. European kings began building large armies that could stand up to Norse invasions, and new taller ships helped make Viking longboats obsolete. Most Norse people also ended up converting to Christianity, which discouraged them from raiding and plundering other European Christians. But their legacy is still with us in our language, our culture, and our literature. 
Yeah, and in our theme park rides too.